are so happy that you've joined us on this 22nd day of our program, 50 Days with God. There are many different figures and symbols in the Bible, and one of them is the unmasked dragon. And what could it be? What does it mean? Well, follow along to learn more about the unmasked dragon. But today's lesson is about the unmasked dragon, which means revealed. Something unmasked, it means revealed or known. Many people, when I was growing up, they never believed that there was a dragon or Satan. Some used to say your evil thoughts is what we call Satan. Some even described the dragon that is like an animal with horns and tail. But what does the word of God say? Who is this dragon? Dragon means the enemy, the enemy of God and uh, men. The adversary, that is Satan. And who is that one? We should know him so that we can know who we are fighting against. The word of God says in Deuteronomy chapter 29, verse 29, secret things belong to God. Revealed things belong to us. But when it comes to the dragon, God did not leave it secret. He revealed to us who is Satan. Where did he come from? The Bible should tell us because it is the word of God that reveals everything. We read in the book of Revelation chapter 12. It says here, and uh, chapter 12 verse 3 and there appeared another wonder in heaven and behold a great red dragon having seven heads and ten horns and seven crowns upon his head and his tail drew the third part of the stars of heaven and did cast them to the earth and the dragon stood before the woman which was ready to be delivered for a for to devour her child as soon as it was born. When we read here, it says here, and there appeared another wonder in heaven, which means this dragon, this Satan, did not come from earth, but came from heaven. Who is he? Who was he? This is what we should do. Start and find it out from the word of God. When we read also in the book of Ezekiel, God reveals something to us. It says in Ezekiel chapter 28, verse 14, Thou art the anointed cherub that covereth, and I have said to thee so, Thou wast upon the whole mountain of God. Thou hast walked up and down in the midst of the stones of fire. This dragon is an angel, a fallen angel. He was a covering care, meaning an angel next to God or next to Christ, close to God with a high position, excelling in strength, wisdom, everything. When we talk of this Satan, he's not an animal with a tail or horns or whatever, but an angel, not even a human being higher than a human being. And the Bible says, when we read in verse 15, same chapter, Thou wast perfect in thy ways from the day that thou wast created till iniquity was found in thee. Like any other angel, he was created perfect from the day God created the angels. He was created perfect, but he, the word of God continues to say, Till iniquity was found there, which means iniquity started or emanated from him. Iniquity was not put in him, but it started in him. Anything evil started with this angel. It did not enter into him, but it started with him, which means he's a beginner, is the originator of anything evil this angel which means he became this angel this carol became an evil angel 
to do evil things, to preach evil things, to do evil things. We continue to read it from the book of Isaiah chapter Isaiah chapter 14. We continue to read also Isaiah chapter 14. Let's hear what the word of God say in Isaiah chapter 14. Verse 12, it says, How art thou fallen from heaven, O Lucifer, son of the morning? How art thou cut down to the ground? which it is the weekend in the nation. For thou hast said in thine heart, I will ascend into heaven. I will exalt my throne above the stars of God. I will sit also upon the mount of the congregation in the sides of the north. I will ascend above the heights of the clouds. I will be like the most high. Yet thou shalt be brought down to hell to the size of the pity. When we look at this, this angel, this carol, desired to be God, not to be like him in kind, but he desired or he coveted, he desired to be like God, to be equal to God, to be God of which it was impossible for a creature to be God. Because God has got no beginning, has got no end, he's omnipotent. Then, this angel, this carol, wanted to be God. Then what happened? We go back again to the book of Revelation, Revelation chapter 12, and listen what the word of God say, verse 7, and there was war in heaven. Michael and his angels fought against the dragon. And the dragon fought and his angels. And prevailed not. Neither was their place found anymore in heaven. You will notice that. When this angel continued, what happened? He deceived other angels in heaven and they followed him. That's why when we read in the book of uh, Revelation chapter 12, it says, verse 4, and his tail drew the dead part of the stars of heaven and did cast them to the earth. Which means uh, this dragon, it says the dragon with his tail drew. It means, this tail means to deceive. Is a symbol of deceit. He deceived other angels and they followed him. When there was war in heaven, this dragon was defeated with his angels. They were cast into the earth. They lost their place in heaven. Which means, as we are talking now, this dragon and his angels, though we don't see them, but they are here on this earth. It continues when we read in the Bible. It says here, the same chapter, Revelation uh, chapter 12, verse 9. And the great dragon was cast out, that old serpent called the devil and Satan, which deceived the whole world. He was cast out into the earth, and this angel was cast out with him. You will find that. He is here on earth. And what is he doing? His duty. His doings. He deceives the people. So that the people, they lose knowledge about God. His work is to let everyone lose knowledge about God and lose life at the end. He is a thief. He is a destroyer. Satan comes to steal and destroy. We read also in the book of uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 4, 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 4, that in whom the God of this world hath blinded the minds of them which believe that they not, lest the light of the glorious gospel of Christ, which is the image of God, should shine unto them. Satan blinds the minds of the people. 
He doesn't want them to know about God. He doesn't want them to know that judgment is coming. He doesn't want them to know about salvation. He doesn't want them to know that Christ died for sinners. Some people, they know that they are sinners. And they know that their end is death. And their life is miserable and in pain. Satan keeps them blinded. Not to know that there is a savior who can redeem them from that miserable life. His work is to deceive and destroy everyone who doesn't know about God. And as we continue, this devil, even if we don't see him, but when we read in the book of Ephesians chapter 6 verse 12, the word of God tells us something. Ephesians chapter 12, sorry, chapter 6 verse 12. Ephesians chapter 6 verse 12. It says here, For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against the powers, against the rulers of this, of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. You see, the word of God tells us that we are not fighting against human beings. We are not fighting against any animal, but against evil powers, high powers, positions. And it continues to say, when we read closely, it says here, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, which means this dragon is a literal devil, is a literal enemy, but he is hidden in the darkness. He is invisible in our naked eyes. But as we see wickedness going on in this world, it shows that there is an instigator. There is a power behind every evil. And this power behind every evil is this dragon, this adversary, this enemy of God. Therefore, we are fighting against unseen force. But knowledge is power. To know about your enemy is victory. Even if you don't see him, but to have knowledge about this enemy, it means we have overcome this enemy. This enemy is there. Even if we don't see him, he is working untiring day and the night in low and high places, in darkness and light, he is working to deceive, to steal and destroy. He is behind everyone. Especially when you look at the book of Revelation. Especially those who have come to the knowledge of Jesus Christ. Who are working for their own salvation and the salvation of other people. He is fighting them to destroy them. He is fighting against the church which is diffusing light to the whole, whole world. The church, the work of the church is to open the mind of everyone to know their savior who redeems them. But this enemy is fighting to destroy. But we should not despair. We should not lose hope. We should not fear because God is in control of everything. But it is left with us to fight the battles and fight in the strength of God to fight against this enemy. We continue to read uh, in the same book of Ephesians, it says here, Put on the whole armor of God that he may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. Which means there are weapons we can use to fight against the enemy. There are weapons provided 
to fight against Satan. We are not left alone. We are not left naked, empty-handed, but there are weapons given to us to fight against the enemy. And we are given a complete uh, arm. God arms us. In the armor of God, there is every weapon complete to fight the devil. Even if it comes from both directions, we have every weapon. Every weapon that can fight in front, on the side, and behind. In hidden things and in open things, those weapons are there. We continue to read also in the same book, uh, verse 13. Wherefore, take unto you the whole arm of God, that ye may be able to withstand in the evil day, and having done all to stand. You see, if we take the whole arm of God, we are able to be conquerors. What is this whole arm of God? We read also in the book of Proverbs, chapter 18, verse 10. Proverbs chapter 18, verse 10. Uh, it helps us to know how we can fight the enemy. Proverbs chapter 18, verse 10. It says here, The name of the Lord is a strong tower. The righteous runneth into it and is safe. The name of the Lord is a strong tower. This is our weapon. The name of Jesus. If When we read the Bible, we will find that the disciples, they read to this word. Whatever difficulty which they met, every, they commanded every difficulty. They commanded every demon every sickness any bad work of the devil they commanded it in the name of Jesus to live there is power in the name of our Lord there is strength in the name of Jesus to command every evil work of the devil to command all evil agents evil workers evil spirits they will obey this name of the Lord and they will be destroyed. This is our weapon. This is our assurance that we shall conquer when we run to the name of the Lord. The snares of Satan are lurking everywhere and his traps want to entangle us. Yes, this invisible world is dangerous and if we're not careful, we can fall into Satan's traps. Next time, if you follow along again and watch a new video, we will have another uplifting message about the path of hope in Revelation. Continue joining us throughout these 50 days with God. Welcome to today's health topic. My name is Eva Lames. I'm a medical doctor and nutritionist from Sweden. Today we are going to talk about preventing heart attacks. So what is a heart attack to start with? Uh, it's also called a myocardial infarction and it's caused by insufficient blood perfusion to the heart. And this causes a lack of oxygen to the muscle cells of the heart. And cells that don't get oxygen they die, so it can it causes a part of the heart to actually die, and this can be life threatening. But for most people today, uh, it results in scar tissue and reduced function of that area of the heart. Of course, depending on how on how severe the the heart infarction was. Heart attacks are caused by coronary artery disease. When the coronary arteries of the heart uh, become uh, uh, stiff and uh, narrowed because plaques that build up slowly inside the walls of the arteries. And when they are stiff and narrowed, that's called a stenosis. And then there is a lack of oxygen, oxygen in the heart, which causes chest pain, 
during stress and exercise, which is called angina. And if a plaque bursts and causes a thrombosis in a coronary artery, uh, this is an acute heart attack. So here's a picture of atherosclerosis, where you see a normal artery first, and then there is a fatty streak, and um, eventually a mature plaque, and then there can be a rupture of the plaque with a thrombosis, and then you uh, can have a heart attack. And this process, uh, as I will come back to, take quite a long time. Here is also a picture of normal coronary arteries, where you can see how the blood flow um, through the arteries this is an x-ray picture, and you see the even shape of the arteries uh, and the, norm, the same color through all the arteries. Here you can see what happens when you get stenosis uh, on the, in the upper part of the picture, where there is almost no blood uh, flowing anymore. And down to the left you see a total occlusion when the blood can't get any further in that artery. So, how do you prevent heart attacks? Well, you have to start by preventing the development of atherosclerosis. And this process in the arteries actually start already uh, in childhood, as a teenager. Um, it has been seen in uh, those injured or uh, who have died in uh, traffic accidents or in conflicts, in wars, that even young people can have atherosclerosis. Risk factor to develop atherosclerosis or heredity. Heredity, if many of your family members have had cardiovascular disease, you are at a higher risk. Smoking is a danger for both your lungs and your heart, so this is something that should really be avoided. Alcohol has a negative effect on uh, your cardiovascular health. It has sometimes been said that it has positive effect that, that perhaps or it has been seen that that's the antioxidants that are present in red wine, red wine um, and you can get it through grape juice or eating dark grapes. Uh, a lot of stress has a negative effect on the heart and on the cardiovascular system. Shift work has also been seen uh, to stress the whole system and it has been shown that it's more dangerous to be awake and especially to eat during the night. Then there is something called the metabolic syndrome, which is uh, four different risk factors that uh, work together and uh, cause risk for especially cardiovascular disease and diabetes. And these four risk factors are overweight with especially uh, abdominal fat, a high blood pressure, insulin resistance, which is an um, early stage of diabetes, and high cholesterol levels and triglycerides, which are the different kinds of fats um, in our body. And all of these are affected by a sedentary, sedentary lifestyle when we don't get ex enough exercise. So how can you prevent an acute heart attack? Um, the classical scene for a heart, a heart attack is a middle-aged or older man uh, with the metabolic syndrome, who eats a large heavy meal and then after that goes out into the cold and starts to shovel snow. Uh, shoveling snow is very heavy on the heart, but it's these things together, uh, the physical stress, it can also be emotional stress, and uh, the other risk factors. Cold in itself is also a risk for acute uh, problems because the heart has to work a lot harder when it's very cold. Um, so to avoid this, you should avoid this severe stress, both physical and emotional, take time to rest, and eat a healthy plant-based diet uh, in moderate amounts. So can you have a heart attack without coronary artery disease? Yes, unfortunately that's possible. Uh, there is something called a type 2 myocardial infarction which is a heart attack caused by something else than coronary artery disease and something that causes a lack of supply of oxygen to the heart. And this can be caused by a severe bleeding or anemia where there is not enough hemoglobin to um, transport oxygen to the heart. 
Uh, it can be a sepsis, a blood poisoning, where you have a severe infection in your body. It can be a serious lung disease that uh, prevents uh, the oxygen, uh, oxygenation of the blood uh, or the flowing of the blood through the lungs. It can be a severe uh, in pneumonia or uh, thrombosis in the lungs or fibrosis. Um, a very high heart rate or a very low blood pressure can also uh, cause problems. And these different factors, usually you need more than one to cause a type 2 uh, heart attack. There's also something called a Takotsubo cardiomyopathy. This can uh, happen in a way that it, it resembles a heart attack very much. But it's also called a broken heart syndrome. Uh, this is usually caused by extreme emotional or physical stress. It's most common in elderly women, women who have maybe been stressed already for a long time and then something very emotional to them happened, uh, an accident or somebody who dies or uh, uh, yeah, something that stresses them a lot. The symptoms are the same as a heart attack, chest pain, uh, you are out of breath and uh, you feel can feel very bad um, with uh, nausea and so on. But when you examine the coronary arteries of a person with Takotsubo, uh, they are normal. What happens is that a part of the blood of the heart actually dilates like a balloon. And it's usually the left ventricle. You will see a picture after this. Um, normally, when you have a Takotsubo uh, cardiomyopathy, the heart will recover completely within weeks or maybe a few months. Uh, usually, you can be a few days in the hospital and then go home, and eventually you will be recovered. But in rare cases, also, Takotsubo can cause serious complications or even death. And that's why it's called broken heart, because then the heart is really broken and cannot work anymore. So, and the main way to avoid a Takotsubo uh, is to avoid stress. And this is not, as I said, it's not very common, but some cases of what is thought to be a heart attack is actually Takotsubo. So, and here you see the picture. Uh, to the left there is a normal heart, and to the right you see a Takotsubo cardiomyopathy uh, or a broken heart uh, where the ve left ventricle is enlarged and dilated and cannot pump the blood uh, efficiently. And why the name Takotsubo? This means uh, octopus trap in Japanese and it has the same shape as uh, the left ventricle uh, uh, when this happens. So, these were something about a heart attack, and I hope you have learned that to prevent a heart attack, you need to start early in life, but also to make sure that your daily life is regular and peaceful and uh, healthy. So, I wish you all the best. Thank you for listening. Heart disease and heart attacks are the leading cause of death in the United States. So it is very important that prevention is the key if you want to live a healthy life. Yes, let's follow advice and information given to prevent falling into heart attacks. See you in the next video where we'll talk about another very informational and wonderful topic entitled how to reduce leg swelling. Hope to see you there.